Hey, what is up everybody and welcome back to another video. So on Friday I posted this image to Instagram which shows me in various spaces in the studio doing different things that I would normally do while I'm in here. And then I superposed them all together till it looks like I'm doing them all at once. I titled it, hanging out with my quarantine buddies. It's a pretty simple technique that you can do, but people ask me a few different questions about different parts of my process from the shooting it to the editing it. And it's something I've done a couple times before, so I figured why not just go through the whole thing. I'm going to start out with how I shot it. If you're just interested in seeing how I edit it, um, you could click to this time. That'll be somewhere up here to see that part of the video. So here's a, um, first off, here's an older one that I had done with three of me sitting on the couch. Um, and that was the title of it, the three of me, kind of like three personality type things. This is fairly simple. Nothing is crossed with each other, and it makes it easy for the editing part. This other one called the four best dudes. This one I noticed was a little more difficult to edit because of the reflections and the shadows. I lit this a lot. And so one good tip when you're doing this is to make sure any objects that you're holding or that are going to be there, you just completely move out of the shot when you're not actually using them. And I could show you right here where there's actually an error in this shot where you could see the chair is not actually like that. There was nothing there, I had to have something. So, but if you wanna save yourself some time, that's a quick thing to remember to do is just take it with you as you leave. So anyways, I set up the camera in the front of the studio. I actually propped the tripod up. These file cabinets I used to hold the TV and then also a little step stool so I could get that perspective. I used ultra wide angle. I think I shot it at about 20 millimeters and I knew it was for Instagram and Instagram is, um, when you shoot vertical, it only takes four by five. So make sure you leave extra room with nothing in it or you'll have to cut that off. So for me, I use the ceiling as extra space. But basically, what, how I do this is I trigger it with my phone. So with my phone, I could actually see what the camera sees, and that's important if the camera's in a place where you can't get to it. The other tip is to focus on something that's near, so I'm focusing on the me that is at the desk. And then I switch over to manual focus, because if not, the camera's gonna change each time, and that actually slightly changes the perspective. And you know, if you wanna spend a ton of time editing and you know how to focus stack, you get into all that. That is not something I was looking to do. Switching over to manual focus is important. If the camera's reachable, then you could use the self timer. Um, another thing I have, Canon has these little IR triggers that you could, um, that you could buy. They're pretty inexpensive and they work with all their DSLRs. They're great, I use it for setup shots all the time. So this I use the camera to get my perspective and then I basically, took the first shot and then I moved around. The only problem with using the phone would be that if you don't want the phone in all the shots, like you could see each one of me, I have it somewhere, like it's hidden behind the newspaper, it's sitting on the bike seat. Anymore, people always had their phone with them, so it's not really that big of a deal. Something to keep in mind, if you can't access your camera, maybe once you get that first shot, or maybe I should have once I got that first shot switched over to using my trigger. Anyways, it's just a matter of, you know, basically changing and taking all the shots. So. I think I used, yeah, I used eight different of me in this one. And I think I could have actually put a couple more in. I was worried about crowding it too much. Another thing to think about is where you're positioning yourself. The editing will be more complicated the more stuff that's blocking you in, the more stuff you have to mask out and all of that kind of thing. So if you keep everything fairly separated, and like I said, you keep everything you're moving then out of the shot, it makes it as simple as possible. So I use Bridge to select the uh, images and Camera Raw to edit the first round of them. Um, you probably use Lightroom, that's fine. They're the same, basically the same two programs combined. Um, so basically go through and star the images that I'm going to want to combine. I take them, I load them all into Camera Raw or into the develop section of Lightroom if you want then you're gonna to wanna to select all of them. You wanna make this so all the edits are the same for the first round. You know, you, any lens correction and stuff like that, you don't want it to be different between the images. So I find editing all the images at once is the best way to do it. So I just go for kind of a nice neutral general one. You have them all open, you do your little tweaks, do your lens corrections. Then I, I save them all, save the images. I usually just give them a number and it'll go through and you could, you know, do all the stuff you would normally do to select it so you have them all in a number, all in an order. So a bunch of numbered images. Basically then I go back to Bridge or you go to like your library in Lightroom. What you're gonna to wanna to do here, select all the images.
go to tools, go to Photoshop, and then you basically want to load them into Photoshop layers. Wait a minute, will all that Photoshop does its work? There is an auto align option if you did not keep the camera totally still or you did do some focusing or you didn't quite do all the lens corrections right. Photoshop can align layers, but to me it's like, why even go through that process when you could just make sure you shoot everything the same. So this is how I do the next step. Basically what I do is I turn off all the layers but the first two. Make a layer mask down here at the bottom in your layers panel. Then over here in the toolbar side, make sure you're selected to black. Grab a brush. I like to use a soft brush to start out with. Increase the brush size. And then I will go in where I know, you know, or you, or you find it where the second layer is and basically paint it in. This guy, there's nothing around, so I don't even need to go in and do any kind of close-ups, but you know, you can double check, but yeah, there's nothing around. I kind of want to go to the wall because where the light is, there's going to be some shadows I'm casting and stuff like that. Basically now, since I have both these layers as the only visible ones, you could go to your layers menu. And then basically what I do is merge visible. Those are now one layer. I turn on the next layer. Same thing, make a layer mask, make sure black and white are the two colors and black is the selected one. And then I come in here, paint the second guy in. Again, he doesn't overlap with anything and that's why I talked about that. It makes it the easiest if you do it that way. Um, layer menu, merge visible, which is also shift control E. If you're gonna do this a bunch, makes the most sense. Now we're just gonna keep repeating this process. The next guy is this guy on the couch. This is one that'll take a little more work though, as you can see what's happening to the hat here. They overlap. Like I said, if you wanna make it really simple, you could always have nothing overlap. It doesn't always make for the best images. So basically what I'll do is I'll zoom in here. You can reverse the colors over here on the side. I'll go back to the hat, still with kind of a wide brush. Make sure I get everything dark. Reverse the colors again. Go back and start painting in what you need. Just make the brush even smaller. And it just depends on what you're doing it for. You know, you could take as much time or as little time as you want on this kind of thing. Um, you could get crazy. You could open up the pen tool. You know, you could do all kinds of stuff to make this absolutely perfect. Right now, zooming out, knowing this is going to be on Instagram. Good enough. Control Shift E. Those layers are merged. Turn on the next one. New layer mask. Oh, this is the guy at the table. Same thing, he has some overlap with the layers before. Zoom in. Refine your selection. Paint that chair out again. That's a reason why I said you would move the chair out in the last one. Not perfect, but you guys get it. So on and so forth until you uh, have your final image. I don't think I need to go through and show you how I did the rest of them because it's the same thing. But the clear thing here is that you could see the reason how you can make this as simple or as complicated as you want to. After I have all my layers merged, you know, then I might go in and do some dodging and burning. My guy in the front here is a little darker, I'd used extra lights in the back and stuff like that. All that could be cleaned up, go as crazy as you want. I'll actually bring it back into camera raw because um, I like to use their editing stuff and I will do some more global adjustments in there. So yeah, nothing too crazy. Um, if you already know Photoshop, you know layer masking. This is super simple to you. Like I said, there's everything in Photoshop can be done tons of different ways. There's other software for this, you know, you could go crazy, you could make this as complicated or as simple as you want. This is just the way I do it. I'm sure there's a million other YouTube uh, tutorials showing how other people do it. This is my method. I don't know, I hope it helped or it just was at least slightly entertaining. I will see you in the next video.